Hey everybody, hope that you're doing good. I am coming to you from my back porch on a nice, cool, lovely uh, early morning. And I got the dogs in the house. You might hear some faint distant barking and the goats are off to my right shoulder at the fence line. So you might even hear some goat noises uh, out there, but I uh, just wanna take a few minutes uh, together today and uh, just share a little bit uh, from my heart, just kind of something the Lord's teaching me over this last week. Uh, I'm a I'm a feeler. Uh, it's something that I know about myself. I kind of feel my emotions. I feel the emotions even of other people in my own life. And while that sometimes can, uh, from a pastoral perspective, it can be a good thing because uh, kind of like what we've been talking about over the last weeks, I can step into the world of another person uh, because I do have the ability to kind of feel their emotions and feel their pain to a little bit of a, a, a degree. Uh, it can certainly be bad as well because if I'm not careful, uh, I can end up in a spot uh, that is unhealthy for me and it's unhealthy for uh, other people. A <laughs> uh, little bit of wind picking up this morning. But um, um, so this last week, I, I've just, I've, I've been struggling, you know, to be honest, just over the last couple of weeks. Um, uh, events that happen in our world, you know, they just kind of, they just, they affect me. So you've seen those uh, devastating wildfires in Hawaii uh, over the last few weeks, uh, seeing the, uh, all of the hurricane activity that was going on this last week in Florida and then up through Georgia and everything. Just, I have friends in those areas, I have family in those areas. And so I uh, carry a lot of uh, kind of anxiety about it. Uh, it seems like every day, you know, you can, you can open up, uh, Turn on the news, open up social media, whatever, whatever news source you, you look to. And, and there's just story after story after story after story that just seem to be so kind of heartbreaking. And the thing for me always is, you know, can be in pastoral ministry is trying to help people find hope. And so you may be in that same spot right now where you're looking at it going, there's so much pain uh, in the world. That's not even getting personal. I'm talking about the, the pain, the fear, the anxiety we have in our, in our own life. I mean, uh, I've kind of been up in my, my feels the last couple of weeks. Uh, I've been drinking out of my Treveca uh, Nazarene University coffee cup most every day. I told Emma this is my prayer cup, that it'll help me remember to pray for her and her school every day. And so, you know, I, I sent my, my baby girl off to college, you know, a week and a half ago. And so there's even that of just, you know, kind of wrestling through with, with the hope of like, how do you find hope in the midst of, you know, major family transitions and different things? I mean, there's just so much out there. And this last week is kind of a, a, a random place, but that's often for me how God's word works in my life is it'll be a random spot that the Lord will take me to that he will remind me of his goodness and his faithfulness. And I'll be reminded of the hope that we have in him. And so just briefly, I want to read uh, Psalm 97, or I'm sorry, Psalm 98, and uh, just share a little bit uh, from that and a few other verses this morning about, you know, where do we go to find hope in what seems like sometimes a, a hopeless world? And so this is Psalm 98. I'm just going to read it and make a few comments along the way. So sing a new song to the Lord, for he has done wonderful deeds. You know, sometimes we just need to remember what the Lord has done uh, when we find hope. We just need to remember that the Lord has done wonderful things. Uh, the psalmist goes on and says, His right hand has won a mighty victory. Again, that just points us to the gospel that, that Jesus has defeated sin and death. He's won the mighty victory of sin in our lives and ultimately wins the mighty victory of sin in this world. Uh, his holy arm has shown his saving power. The Lord has announced his victory and revealed his righteousness uh, to every nation. Again, that's, that's, that's pointing us to the hope that we have in Jesus, pointing us to the saving power that we have uh, in Jesus Christ. He has remembered his promise to love and be faithful to Israel. To the ends of the earth, we have seen the victory of our God. Again, the good news of Jesus is not contained to geographic locations. It's spread throughout the whole earth. And then uh, some of my uh, Gen X friends, you, you probably remember this uh, line from a big worship song back in the 90s. Uh, Shout to the Lord, all the earth. Break out in praise and sing for joy. Sing your praise to the Lord with the harp and, the harp, uh, and, and with the harp and mel uh, melodious song. With trumpets and the sound of the ram's horn. Make a joyful symphony before the Lord the king. This is the response to this uh, victory that God has won, that we, we respond in song and worship. Uh, that's, that's the response that we should have. 
when we, when we encounter and remember uh, the good news of the gospel. Uh, and then verse 7 says this, Let every sea and everything in it shout his praise. Let the earth and all living things join in. Let the rivers clap their hands. I mean, this is inviting creation into worship. Let the rivers clap their hands in glee. Let the hills sing out their songs of joy before the Lord. And then here, here it is in Psalm 98, I think gives us so much hope when we look around and we see so much hopelessness in the world. Listen to this. For he is coming. I, I circled that in my Bible. I, I, don't know if, uh, I don't know if you can see it or not there in the video, but I, I literally, I just circled it. I just, I just, I've been meditating on that all week long for he is coming. He is coming. And that is hope that I have carried, hope I have kind of just clung to this week. Uh, for he is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the earth with justice and the, the nations with fairness. And I've just clung to that all, all week long that uh, Jesus Christ has come to save and reveal and heal, but he is coming once and for all one day to judge the nations with fairness and that he will restore uh, the things in this world that are currently broken. And so I, just to kind of take this a little further, I want to take us to a couple of passages of scripture uh, that show us uh, first that, that Jesus, when he comes, he is going to heal creation and heal our bodies. Uh, listen to this. This is over in Romans chapter eight, such an encouraging uh, passage of scripture. Listen to this. Yet what we suffer now is nothing compared to the glory that he will reveal to us later. For all creation is waiting eagerly for that future day when God will reveal who his children really are. I mean, I, I read that this week and I just, I thought about uh, the groaning. Paul's going to write about it here in just a minute. The groaning of creation. I thought about the, 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 the tornadoes we've seen over the last few weeks in some of these communities, the hurricanes, the flooding, all of the different sort of natural disasters. And, and to me, that's a way of creation just groaning, longing for God to make all things new. Against its will, all creation was uh, subjected to God's curse. But with eager hope, Creation looks forward to the day when it will join God's children in glorious freedom from death and decay. For we all know that creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up until the present time. Right up until now, creation has been groaning, waiting for God to come and restore all things. <clears throat> and then Paul talks about us. He says this, And we believers also groan, even though we have the Holy Spirit within us as a foretaste of future glory. God, part of the hope we have is God's given us the Holy Spirit. It's a foretaste of the future glory that will that will be revealed to us when Christ finally does restore all things. For we long for our bodies to be released from sin and suffering. We long for, for our bodies to be released from the decay and disease and sickness and the way our bodies break down uh, in our lives. We too wait, I love this, we too wait with eager hope for the day when God will give us our full rights as his adopted children, including the new bodies he's promised us. We were given this hope when we were saved. If we already have something, we don't need to hope for it. But if we look forward to something we don't yet have, we must wait patiently and confidently. Uh, Paul's writing there saying that God one day, the hope, part of the hope we have is that God, when we look out in the, in the de death and the destruction of the creation of the world, that, that one day God's going to restore that. That creation is groaning and longing and they're waiting. Creation is waiting for God to restore things. And then God's going to restore our bodies. He's going to restore He's going to restore our bodies and and give us new bodies. Make make this death and decay and this 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 um, deterioration that we experience in our bodies, a sickness and health and all of those things. He's going to restore that. Another passage that really gives us a lot of hope is this passage in First John that that God's not only going to restore creation, but He's not only going to restore our bodies as He comes to judge the earth with justice and fairness but that he's also going to restore our soul. He, the, the sin that plagues us in our lives, God's going to restore that one day too. I mean, part of the reason our bodies might be broken down and we experience disease and death and decay in our own lives is because of the sin that we've clung to. But one day, the hope we have is that one day God's going to restore that. Listen to this. First John chapter 3. Uh, Dear friends, we, already, uh, we are already God's children, but he has not yet shown what it will be like when... Uh, uh, he has not yet shown us what 
we will be like when Christ appears. But we know that we will be like him, for we will see him as he really is. And all who have this eager expectation, this eager hope, will keep themselves pure just as he is pure. What, what John is writing here, he's saying that when Christ comes, we'll be like him. We'll be sinless, we'll be spotless, we'll be pure uh, because of the when Christ returns. So we hold that hope. We hold that hope that not only creation will be restored, not only our bodies, our physical bodies, sickness, death, all of that will be restored. Our souls will be restored. The sin that plagues us now that sometimes we, we try to fight so hard against, one day the hope we carry is that one day we'll be like Jesus. We will be made new like Jesus, that there will be no more sin and death in our own lives that we carry, but that we'll be made pure like Jesus. And then the, the last passage of Scripture, it would, would be a fault on my part to not mention this to us today. Uh, I just love this text in Revelation uh, chapter 21 that again the apostle john uh, writes he says this i heard a loud shout from the throne saying look god's home is now among his people he will live with them again this is this is a, a, a kind of a conclusion to this idea of the incarnation that god loves us so much he wants to be with us well one day when all things are made new and all things are made right we will be with god and god will be with us they will be his people. God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes, and there will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. All these things will be gone forever. And the one sitting on the throne said, Look, I am making everything new. And then he said to me, Write this down, for what I tell you is trustworthy and true. You see, this is the hope that we have inside us. That on those dark days, on those days where we look around and we just go, God, where's their hope? We hold the hope deep in our soul, deep in our lives, that one day God will come and he will judge the, the world with fairness and justice. And that when that day comes, he's going to restore creation. So the creation that we see that is broken, he's going to restore that. Our bodies that break down and decay and get sick and diseased and all of those things surrounding that, one day that will, that will be fully restored. That our souls that are, that are still wounded by the sin that, that is around us and on our lives, one day uh, we will not have to deal with that anymore. That one day God is coming to restore our souls. And that one day he will wipe every tear from our eye. That the things big and small that we grieve over, that we lament over, that we cry over, that we, that we are, feel hopeless in and over, one day God's coming and will restore all of those things. He will wipe every tear from our eyes. That those things, we won't cry about them anymore. Literally, that's what, I think that's what that text is saying. We won't cry about those things anymore because there won't be those things to cry about. God's coming to restore all things. So we, we hold this hope deep in our soul. But here's the part about being a follower of Jesus that uh, we, uh, the, the kind of the, the mantle that we carry is that we hold this hope out to the world. And so when we see people in our world who are hurting and broken and they feel helpless, even if they don't know Jesus, this is, this is the hope that we get to hold out. That one day Jesus will come and he will finally restore creation, finally restore our bodies, finally restore our souls, and finally restore all things. We hold that hope in our souls, but we hold that hope out to the world as well. I want to leave us uh, this morning with a, uh, a blessing, but the blessing I want us to, uh, to, to look at this morning is uh, what we typically refer to as the Lord's Prayer. And I'd like for us to pray this together. And I've got one of my old, uh, the, well, he used to call me his grandfather-in-law, but Nana and Papa, uh, Kelly's grandparents, uh, were so dear to our family. And uh, Papa was a, a reader of Scripture, a lover of Scripture. And this is one of their many Bibles that we got um, uh, from them. You can see the every page just about is is. is fluffed up and the pages are thin I've lost my place here now in Matthew I'm going to have to turn back here and find it but the pages are super thin from just being worn down I mean I hope my Bibles one day look like this um, but I want to read from the, the old King James uh, just this pastoral blessing this morning uh, and maybe if you know it you can recite uh, this old prayer along with me uh, this is from uh, Matthew uh, chapter 6 Jesus's words uh, to his disciples in this manner, pray therefore, 
in this way. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I hope this week that you um, remember these words and that as you find seasons and times in your life where you feel hopeless, where you just look around and you go, God, where could there possibly be hope in life? Uh, I pray that you would remember these words, uh, that one day uh, God will come and he will judge the world with fairness and justice, that he will restore creation, he will restore our bodies, he will restore our souls, make us like Jesus, and he will restore all things. I hope you have a great weekend. Um, don't forget, next week we're back together. We're going to start a brand new sermon series called Prodigal. Uh, we're going to be looking for the next few weeks at the story of uh, that Jesus told in Luke chapter 15 about uh, the prodigal and uh, kind of see ourselves in that and really find a way to embrace grace through that. I think we all need uh, to see the picture of the grace that Jesus has. So we're going to be starting that sermon series next week. So we'll be back at Malco 930 next Sunday. I hope to see you there. I love you. Uh, pray that you have a great holiday weekend. Uh, grace and peace. We'll see you soon.